evening, everyone. I am not sure after listening to all of that that I actually have anything that I can help you learn. I've learned a lot just sitting there and I've been very, very impressed with all of you. So thank you, Tara, for the great in introduction and thank you for inviting me to share in the incredible work that you all have undertaken over the last three months. Looking at you all here this evening and learning about your projects makes me very excited about the future and actually very excited about your future. So I am going to share three tips that I found valuable when I started out and that helped me develop into a leader and may help you achieve your future goals. But I will be, I will be very honest. I think you all know a lot of these tips and I think that you figured a lot of them out during your experience at Technovation, but I'll share a little bit of my stories with you about them. But before I talk about the future and your future, I would like to say a word about the past, because this is a big anniversary. It was 200 years ago, in 1815, that the very first computer programmer was born. She was a girl born in England, named Ada Lovelace. Anybody know about Ada? Ah, okay, you guys all know about Ada. She was 17 when she befriended a Cambridge math professor named Charles Babbage, and in 1837, Babbage came up with the idea for a programmable computing machine. And as you know, it had a CPU, a central processing unit, it had memory, and it used the conditionals that you all are familiar with from the if-then statements. And Babbage called it the analytical engine, and he called young Ada the enchantress of numbers. Not sure I really was fond of that, but that's what he said. But it was a fitting nickname because she was a world-class Olympic mathlete. She wrote extensively on his plans, and in her published notes about the machine, she wrote an algorithm for computing a special sequence of rational numbers. So she actually wrote the first computer program in human history, and she was only 21 at the time. And her program would have worked, but computers, the machine, didn't physically exist and computers wouldn't be physically produced for a century, so Ada kept dreaming. Even more than Babbage did, she saw the machine's potential, and she insisted that it was capable of working with other things besides numbers. Its operations, she wrote, could encompass all the things in the universe, and even though she was many decades ahead of her time, her vision, and her intellect prove right. And I'll give you an example. A few years ago, for the very first time, the computers on the space probe Voyager 1 moved out of our solar system and into interstellar space, floating in the plasma between the stars. And that's the power a young woman foresaw almost 200 years ago. And that's the power at your fingertips. That's the power of the world of tech. Now, you heard my introduction. And you heard very clearly that I'm not a tech CEO. And I will confess, I do not know how to code. And I'll confess even more, I'm not even an early adopter. But I do love my Uber. I was an early adopter of Uber because I travel around the world and Uber is terrific. But it's very obvious to me that tech is the industry that will drive the biggest changes in your lifetime and in the rest of my lifetime. And if I were just starting out, I'd be planning a career in tech myself. I plan looking at what I've done with my career. It looks relatively old fashioned. I was a lawyer, I was an investment banker, and now I'm a CEO. Uh, so it looks like I, I went on all the rides, but I didn't go on any of the STEM rides. And that's the opportunity that you have. Because the current workforce today cannot keep up with the pace of innovation. Here in the US, jobs in science, technology, engineering, and math are among the fastest growing and the best paid. For software developers alone, more than 200,000 job openings are projected between 2012 
in 2022. The world needs your talents. And as an employer, let me tell you, that is an incredible advantage for you to have. But even if you choose not to go into tech, the experience that you've gained at Technovation will be invaluable. You've learned, and we've heard about them, you've learned very important lessons about tech, about work, and about yourselves, and lessons that will serve to help you for the rest of your lives and can help shape your livelihoods too. So I'd like to talk about three of those lessons today, and I am proud to say I have even made them tweetable. So, first, start with problems. Second, seek the stretch. And third, teamwork matters. So let's start with the first one, start with problems. So when we talk about problems, we all know there's a problem within the tech sector itself. Close to half the US workforce is female, but women make up less than a quarter of the workers in science, technology, engineering, and math. In the mid-1980s in the United States, 37% of computer science graduates were women. Today, that number is 18%. So clearly there's a bug in the system. But when Anu Tawari looked at those statistics, she didn't see just a problem, she saw an opportunity, and the result was Technovation, which has grown from 45 girls in 2010 to thousands of amazing participants like you. So the truth is, problems are often the most compelling sources of inspiration, and problems usually offer the greatest opportunity to have a meaningful impact, and I think you get that. Just look at the issues that you've tackled with your apps. Waste disposal in Nigeria and India, impaired driving among American teens, obesity and malnutrition in Mexico, and more. And some of those apps may put my business out of business. I'm in the recycling business, and there were two apps up there that were talking about recycling waste, which is what we do. We recycle metals. We recycle metals that other people throw away. And we, we like to say we see value where other people see waste, and you're taking my business to another level. So. I see my competition. So I gotta get close to you because that's what you do with your competition. But these are the problems that you have identified are problems that most people find paralyzing and you find energizing. You saw how wrestling with a difficult problem can inspire tremendous creativity and you felt how rewarding it was to finally arrive at a solution. And you saw that the world would reward that effort too that people would pay you back, whether in money or recognition or stories about how your solution changed their lives, which is often more valuable than the other two. This is an insight that the tech community is famous for embracing. In the tech community, not only is every problem a start, it often becomes a startup. But starting with problems is more than just a good way to generate app ideas. It's something that you can apply in your life, to your life, no matter what industry you end up in. Because wherever you are, whatever institution you're part of, there will be problems that need fixing. And in a world of people who are content to wring their hands or shrug their shoulders, you can be the one to raise your hand and say, I'm on it. So starting with problems is how you get to revolutionary breakthroughs. It's how you can make your career a success and make the world a better place. My second point is seek the stretch. So let me explain what I mean. Your life right now is filled, filled with tests given to you by others. And trust me, I even remember this. Midterms, finals, APs, baccalaureates, O-levels, A-levels, SATs, ACTs. It seems like they'll never end, but they do. But when you enter the workforce, those sharpened pencils, booklets for any of those who still use them, I don't think very many still exist, but the bubbles that we're all very familiar with, they will fast become a thing of the past. And instead of taking someone else's test, it will be time to start testing yourself. 
So start practicing now. Seek out situations that stretch your abilities. Take that difficult class, volunteer to lead a project, try a new extracurricular. Don't do it for a grade or a score or a rank. Do it because that's how you grow. And I speak from experience. I started out as a lawyer. But after a few years in law, investment banking was booming. And I saw the opportunity to enter an industry that would stretch my capabilities. And as a banker, I chose a field that was just being developed called securitization. I didn't go into mergers and acquisitions. I decided to try something new. And that led to living overseas for a decade, which for me was another stretch experience. And eventually it led to me working with a client, a new CEO of a major steel company, who asked for help devising a strategy to take the company forward. I had never worked in the steel industry, but I knew it would push me to think in new and different ways. And so I joined him, and a few years later, when he asked me to take over and become the CEO, I knew I was ready. My diversity of experience had equipped me for the challenge. And a lifetime of reaching beyond my comfort zone had given me something else really important. And it's a kind of confidence that I would describe as unembarrassment. I am never ashamed of not knowing something or not having a certain skill because I know that there is no such thing as not being good enough. There's only not being good enough yet. Not being good enough yet is a wonderful place to be. If you waited to be perfectly equipped for every situation before you even tried, there are so many things you might never try at all, so many opportunities that you'll miss. So seeking the stretch means taking the plunge and believing that you're smart enough and strong enough to start paddling because you are. And remember that when you try something new, you don't have to figure it all out on your own. Reach out to the teachers and the mentors around you. Reach out to one another for support and don't fear failure. If you get in the habit of testing yourself, then you always have tomorrow and the next day. And besides, you're off to a great start anyway. Being part of Technovation is seeking out a stretch situation. Some of you may have come into this never having written a word of code, never having tested an idea in the market, never having pitched a business concept, but you just knew you wanted to push yourself and that there would be mentors and, re and resources along the way to help you. And that will be true for the rest of your life. It's exhilarating, isn't it? It's fun. Taking responsibility for testing yourself is so much more fun than having others test you. You have all learned how rewarding it is to build something, to bring an idea to fruition, to be able to point to something useful and fun and cool and know that it exists only because of you. Remember that feeling that you have today and keep on seeking the stretch because even though your comfort zone, leaving your comfort zone can be uncomfortable, it almost always leads to someplace worth going. Now, before I make my last point, teamwork matters, I want you to think about something. Consider that today's microprocessors are 3,500 times more powerful than the ones created in the 1960s. It's probably when most of your parents were born, maybe even later. Now, imagine that Ada Lovelace's friend, Charles Babbage, had been successful. Imagine that the computer age had, become, had begun 100 years earlier not in the 1940s, but in the 1830s. So just imagine the heights humanity might have reached by today, the problems we might have solved or prevented. But it didn't happen. Why? Because Charles Babbage wasn't a good team player. His machine was composed of thousands of parts, all had to be handmade. Babbage couldn't get along with his chief engineer, or persuade anyone to fund the project. Teamwork matters. And I can tell you as an employer, when I'm evaluating a candidate, I place a high value on how well that person can work with others. 
it doesn't really matter how impressive a person's skill set is. Someone else with a slightly lesser skill set but a greater ability to collaborate can multiply her brain power, can multiply her impact and her productivity and her imagination by however many people she works with. So for me, it's an easy choice. And the same is true of Silicon Valley. The great myth of this place is that it's run by solitary geniuses in hoodies and headphones, writing code too elegant for anybody else to understand. But that's really not the case. Google isn't the story of two men. It's the story of 47,000 women and men. Apple isn't the story of one man. It's the story of tens of thousands of people working together to make something great. The companies in the Valley represent some of the greatest collaborative projects that the world has ever seen. So if you enter this industry, you're joining that proud legacy. So whether you're leading your team or you're an integral part of your team, or you're just contributing a single key insight that everyone else was missing, your ability to improve the functioning of the group is essential. So think about the project that you did for Technovation. What would you have produced if it had just been you? Would you have been able to do all the coding? Did you have the eye for the design that was so crucial for the interface or the video editing skills to make your pitch? There's a saying that no one can whistle a symphony. The magic happens when all the instruments play together. So I'd like to close by mentioning another hero from the computer science history books. In 1969, the Data Processing Management Association awarded their first ever computer science man of the year prize to a giant of the sector. That giant in the sector was actually 5.6, and her name was Grace Hopper, Computer Science Man of the Year. Grace embodied everything that you have learned here at Technovation. After leaving her job as a professor to join the Navy during World War II, and that was a definitely a stretch assignment, she noticed a problem. Many people shied away from computers because they didn't like using symbols, so she decided to fix that. She assembled a team, and together they developed the very first compiler, revolutionizing computer science. So soon compilers enabled computers to understand English commands. And so for the first time in history, computers spoke our language. And then the conversation really took off. Grace Hopper had been inspired by Ada Lovelace, and now the baton is being passed to you. You are preparing to join a group of women who have revolutionized technology and the world. In an age when the power of digital technology is more extraordinary than ever, you are the ones that will take us to new heights. Grace Hopper foresaw that too. She said, we talk about our natural resources, we talk about oil and coal and timber, and she said, I think we all too often forget that the greatest natural resource we have is our young people. They are our future. You are our future. And that's a responsibility I hope you'll heed and an opportunity I hope you cherish because I can't wait to see what you accomplish. Thank you very, very much for the invitation. <laughs>